Hey, Coffee Geeks. I'm just assuming you're Coffee Geeks. Neat Nation, what's up? You know, I almost forgot where I was for a moment, actually. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm so used to doing the Stone Creek Coffee podcast. Um, and I'm tired. It was a long day. I found out I made a $5,000 mistake today at work, um, which was obviously not the a, a great way to end your week before you start Christmas Eve, but um, it happens. What are you going to do? Like, we all make mistakes sometimes, um, and I am not immune, but, gosh, I should have a bourbon, right? <laughs> Aaron, yikes. Yeah, yikes. Whew. All right. Let's start off with something that is going to get us in the turkey mood. I was going to go with Kentucky Spirit, but I think I left that upstairs. So we're going to kick it off with uh, a little bit of Rare Breed Rye. And let's recap last week as we did the bottle pop of the Rare Breed Rye, which I really, really enjoyed. But today we're going to bottle pop Master's Keep decades so it is going to be a good good night i have looked at this bottle i'll talk about it more in a minute but i've looked at this bottle for a long long time now um and it was after fred minnick named it one of his top 20 whiskeys of the century so far that i was like okay i'm gonna stop looking at it and i went ahead and actually i bought two because they just sat on the shelf forever um and uh, I'm glad I did, because then they were gone <laughs> after that. It seems like enough people pay attention to Fred Minnick that if he says something is good, we kind of listen. And generally, I find my palate kind of lines up with Fred, so cannot uh, cannot argue. Uh, see people showing up in the chat. <coughs> um, Fred, what's up? Trev Wilson's uh, modding for me tonight. He's also modding for the Mash and Drum. Uh, on that live feed so it's a busy night in the whiskey tube verse so trev thanks for doing what you do man uh just a reminder to everybody after i sip Mm. still good it hasn't changed from last week reminder to everybody um you know this is hangout time which i'm thrilled for this is whiskey socialization so you better have whiskey in your hand and then don't hesitate to jump in the comments. If you got questions, just at me so I can see them because you guys will kind of talk back and forth and that's great. Um, but if you want me to see a question or see a remark, just at me, bro. That would be great. If you want to support the channel, there's a couple ways you can do that. Well, before I even get into that, <laughs> thank you for those of you who have supported the channel. Um, you know, the Drew P. Whiskey Keep It Neat shirts are live in my Etsy store because I haven't built out my website yet, but a lot of you have gone and bought some. So I'm going to like sell out of those things before I even have them in hand. So those I should get in like the day before New Year's and then they're going to go out the day after New Year's. Um, And y'all have bought like 21 of the 50 I had printed. So thanks for that. (coughs) Excuse me. If y'all want a shirt, just get down in the uh, show description. There's a link to the shirts over there. Um, I appreciate it. That's pretty, pretty awesome of you to buy a shirt. I mean, I think they're pretty cool and they're high quality shirts. So definitely think it's worth, worth the value. Uh, the other way you can support the channel is by clicking on the little dollar sign at the bottom of the chat. Absolutely no pressure. If you want to ask a question and not super chat, that's totally fine, but you could buy me a drink tonight. Um, just by hitting that dollar sign and super chatting, that would be rad. But y'all do you. This is, again, about socialization and sharing rad whiskeys. So uh, lots of, lots of what are we drinking up in there. So uh, I'm going to share a story with you guys while I get my palate acclimated to whiskey. Um, First, John White, good evening from Nashville, sipping on Monkey Shoulder tonight. You know, that's a good blended scotch, no doubt. And their brand's pretty cool, too. Uh, First time I had monkey shoulder was in Long Beach, California. I was there for a coffee competition, and uh, it worked. did well. On to my story. Um, So today was kind of rough at work, but human beings can be pretty, pretty cool. So last week on the live feed, uh, a guy named Steve showed up in the chat. Steve's a Milwaukeean. 
and Steve and I, we work in the same industry, so we sort of knew of each other, but technically we're competitors, so we never really connected, never talked, never met. And uh, he he reached out to me after the live feed last week and said, hey, you know, if you want to come by my shop, I've got a few old Forester products you might want to try. And the dude just, like, again, we had no connection, but super generously just shared some some really special pours with me uh, today, actually, as, as I was finishing up work, I stopped by after I was picking up some Christmas gifts last minute, obviously, because I'm a last minute kind of dude. <laughs> and um, yeah, just Steve shared some tastes of 19 and 20 Old Forester birthday bourbon and Old Forester 150th, just because. Um, so this holiday season, be like Steve, be like Steve. And you know, the people around you who you have an opportunity to reach out to and just connect with, connect with them. That's an amazing deal. Um, we have that ability, even with people we don't necessarily think we're going to connect with, we can, like, there's nothing keeping us from having really positive, helpful relationships, um, in this world. And that's what we need right now. Like the world sucks. (laughs) Like we're coming out of that election, which was brutal. Um, like regardless of what side you were on, that was brutal. Um, and then we're dealing with this whole COVID thing, which has been politicized. So that's brutal. Um, so again, not even to get into the what's and the whys and the wherefores, just be kind. Uh, we have so many opportunities to be kind to people. So look for opportunities to do that here over the next couple of days, Christmas coming up and then New Year's. It's a pretty awesome opportunity to do that. So Steve, thanks, man. All right, we got a super chat. Patrick, thanks, man. Any coffee region that you think matches well with bourbon, rye, or scotch, respectively? Well, I'm not a big fan of Sumatran coffees, generally, but Sumatran coffees are crazy earthy. So if you were going to pair, like, a peated scotch with a coffee, I'd, I'd kind of match those up. Um, you know, if you're into scotch, you know that phenolic compounds are a big deal, like phenol parts per million in scotch is a thing. Um, and in coffee, there's often, you, we, we tend to not want phenol in coffee. Excuse me. <coughs> Cough has still got me. It's not COVID. Um, you tend to not want phenol in coffee, but it shows up in Sumatra, and some people like that. So it depends on whether or not you want a sweet, clean, and juicy coffee, or you want an earthy, full, kind of funky coffee. So Sumatra and... Um, scotch may be a really interesting pair. Bourbon and coffee is really, really tough because it bourbon is so sweet and powerful and in your face. Like if you're dealing with a nuanced, complex coffee, the the bourbon can often kind of take over and you don't get a lot out of your coffee. So I try not to pair them too much. I do actually want to do some work on that in the future and, and say if you were to create a coffee to pair with bourbon, we'll call it bourbon blend coffee, what would that be? So I haven't done it yet, but I should work on it pretty quick. Pretty quick. All right. So before we pop this bottle, I just want to tell you all, Merry Christmas. We got Christmas Eve tomorrow. My kids went down and uh, I was like, all right, it's Christmas Eve tomorrow. They want to build a box fort. So we're getting ready for that. Um, but I hope you guys just have an opportunity to hang out with family Um have some good vibes, watch some football, eat some food, drink some bourbon. Um, should be swell a couple of days. It's going to get cold in Wisconsin, though, tomorrow. So definitely going to need the bourbon for sure to keep that cold away. Uh, Kiko Hayes, coffee equals bourbon to me. Coffee equals bourbon to me? I'm not sure what that means. Or it's the same level of awesomeness? Not sure. But, dude, thank you for that super chat. Very generous of you. Thanks a lot. All right, you know what? I gotta put this back because I'm gonna show you guys the unboxing of the Wild Turkey Decades. All right, here we go. So these boxes are cool. It's an unnecessarily large box. I'm trying to keep the light out of that, but it's really well built. Um, it's got like a magnetic closure, so it kind of sits nice on the shelf. Takes up enough space for like four bottles though. And then these, get this right, 
these wild turkey master's keep bottles are so cool it's got the embossed turkey on the front i'm assuming it's a wild turkey and then it's got a copper top there on the lid and i mean you could leave it on the shelf all the time and uh it would look good if you left it there, but hey, it's meant to be drunk. So let's see how this thing sounds. But then we got to deal with the plastic first. <laughs> the plastic is brutal. Brutal. Uh, Lone Wanderer says, Can you explain pea berries and why it's such an expensive coffee? Um, well, it depends on where the pea berries are from. And uh, when we get done with with master's keep maybe remind me and I'll, I'll come back to a coffee question seems like you guys like to talk coffee just as much as you like to talk bourbon which i'm totally down for uh, i just don't want to bore other people at the end of tonight's live stream we'll take some nominations for some stuff on my shelf to bottle pop next week and then we'll i'll throw up some polls on instagram over the coming week and we will agree we'll vote on on what we should bottle pop but here we go plastic is now off man i heard such great things about this whiskey but let's give it a listen oh yeah i if that sound was any indication of how good the whiskey inside is this cork is got to be this got to be the heaviest cork i have ever had like this is an unbelievably heavy cork It smells really, really sweet, even in the bottle. That's probably good because we're going to be drinking some other stuff tonight. Like crazy sweet. I get, uh, you know what, in the Kentucky Spirit I have opened, it's got a really funky nose, and that's pretty normal for wild turkey products. Like they tend to have this heavy funkiness. I don't get a lot of the funkiness here. It's just really rich uh i get a little bit of tobacco and leather but a little buttercream frosting oh i get some rye i get some spicy more herbaceous type stuffs it's calming down a little bit i get more rye now i'm gonna let this sit here for just a second we'll get another question in before i ingest this fluid Carlos says, Droopy Whiskey, what are your views on decanters? I know some amazing juice comes in beautiful bottles, but maybe for a daily drinker. So if the question is, how do I feel about having a decanter around? I'm pro decanter. <laughs> I've got a pretty dope one somewhere. It may be upstairs, but it was my grandma's. It was this really cool crystal. I think it was technically a wine decanter. But uh, if I ever have a cork break or, you know, I'm just feeling like I'm going to empty a bottle of Elijah Craig into a decanter or if I'm hosting a dinner or something, decanters just look awesome. And so if you're going to drink the whiskey in relatively short order, use a decanter because it's fun. Uh, they don't seal really well, so that's why I would drink it in relatively short order. But, uh, yeah. If you're talking about how do I feel about the old style stuff that they sell or they used to sell in decanters, like there's a ton of Jim Beam decanter releases in the 70s and 80s. They're just like trying to invent ways to sell bourbon. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, I know Old Forester did some decanters. Of course, the Old Fitz decanter now that's out is a remake of a uh, like an old Old Fitz decanter. Um, those ceramic decanters apparently can have lead in them. So some of that whiskey may be overly exposed to lead from the decanter. I'd watch out for that. Um, but apparently some of the other stuff, like the Old Crow Chessmen, so those were like 60s bourbons that were in decanters that apparently are fantastic if you get the right one. So generally I'm pro decanter from an aesthetic standpoint if you're talking about buying old decanters just be careful do your research on what you're buying matt droopy whiskey merry christmas man love the content enjoying the stream while wrapping gifts for the kids dope i hope you have bourbon too what are you drinking matt keep my daily drinkers in a decanter currently is full of old forester rye it's a good call good call okay yeah super sweet uh it's reminding me of something <laughs> 
a whiskey that I've had, but I got nothing. Smells good. Bottom line is we're not going to get too technical here. The Wild Turkey Decades smells really rad. Let's taste it. Tastes really rad. Okay, a little bit about the whiskey here we're talking about. 104 proof. Um, this was released in 2017. And as I mentioned, it sat on the shelf. Like, it's almost 2021, and you could still pick this up. I'm sure there are places across the country where it's still sitting. But it was all over Milwaukee until just like a month ago when Fred named it whatever, some, some teen number in his whiskeys of the century so far. And uh, it's because when it was released, it was probably overpriced. In 2017, 150 bucks for an allocated whiskey was a lot. It's not as much now, like relative to the competition. The competition out there, um, you know, it, 150 is kind of the average. So um, not a bad buy these days, but I think because it sat there so long, it just continued to linger. Um, but... After Fred named it, it was then all of a sudden gone around me. Uh, but 104 proof and uh, 10 to 20 year old whiskeys is what is supposedly in this bottle. So how much of it's 10 year, how much of it's 20 year old, like 10 to 20, like that's a 20 years old is old whiskey. And I would expect a lot of uh, like pronounced oak in both the nose and the flavor profile. I do not get that at all. It's not drying in the least. It's really, really viscous, uh, really creamy. Super creamy mouthfeel. Um, kind of toffee-like, so kind of like a cashew toffee. It does have some nuttiness that's around there. Um, like I said, that the leathery essence is, is, is around so it's certainly a well-aged whiskey, but if I'm just doing this in a blind, I never ever would have thought that this had like 20-year-old whiskey in it. I just don't get that much age influence in it. But it's clearly mature. Like it's it's a whiskey that's gone through puberty. <laughs> it's ready to go. Um and I'm going to have to come back to it too cuz some you know, you taste something one time and you're like, "Wow, that's that's good, but I really need to sit sit down with it, you know, a uh, finger and a half in a tumbler, and let that sit, um, because some of my favorite whiskey experiences, like, oh, that tastes amazing, are always in a tumbler. The Glencairn is nice for sort of assessing it, but I, if I'm assessing a whiskey to try and tell you what I'm tasting, I almost never enjoy it as much as I will later when I'm just, like, sitting and drinking. And that's what happened to me last week with the Rare Breed Rye, too. William Wiley, Droopy Whiskey, have you had Jameson Cold Brew? What are your thoughts on it being a coffee guy? Well, I don't really like Jameson in general, um, with a couple exceptions. Jameson Black is okay, <coughs> and then I had a distillery release, like cask strength Jameson, that a friend had gotten on his honeymoon. I was able to try that. We called it his marriage bed whiskey. Pretty good. Um, and... Uh, that was quite good. But anyway, the cold brew I have not had. So short answer, no. Am I skeptical? Yes. I'm very skeptical. <laughs> um, just because like a coffee, whiskey, mashup gimmick feels sketchy. But hey, drink curious. So because I haven't had it, I will not cast a verdict. Um, I should probably try it at some point. Probably not going to buy a bottle though. So maybe if I see it at a bar, I'll ask for a little nip. Another question here, Patrick. Droopy Whiskey, a cool video might be how to taste coffee and how to use it to taste whiskey. Well, I did a video on how to taste whiskey. I left out a very important flavor component in that video, though, and that was fruit, fruit flavor notes. So I thought about amending that video or adding a little appendix. Uh, how to taste coffee is pretty much, you know, the same. In coffee, if you go to the Specialty Coffee Association website, there's what's called a flavor wheel. And I'll use this in bourbon sometimes, too. Is it starts close around the center and it breaks flavor up into you know these big buckets kind of like i did spice fruit uh sweet 
floral. And so you're like, okay, am I tasting spice? Am I tasting fruit? And then from there, it breaks out and gets more detailed. If it's fruit, then it's like grapes and strawberries and bananas and whatever. Um, and so if you're learning to taste, you can go to the Specialty Coffee Association and get the coffee flavor wheel, and you'll probably come up with a lot of flavor notes for bourbon as well. And I, there may be a resource out there for bourbon like that now. I've not seen it. If not, I should partner with a couple of swell peeps and make one. But I'm sure there is one. Seems like something Fred Minnick would have done. But maybe not. Lots of coffee talk in the chat today. <laughs> well, maybe uh, the hardcore bourbon peeps uh, might get a little bored, but it's okay. It's okay. We'll just balance the coffee talk with bourbon talk. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy this bottle, I think. it The 104 proof carries over. That's kind of my money zone. Like, it's enough where it's like, okay, I get some heat. I get some spice. It's like a black pepper finish on it. So there's an intensity there that I like out of a bourbon. But it doesn't blow me away. It's not hard to taste. The heat's there, but it's it's complementary to the overall profile of the whiskey. And I dig that. I dig that for sure. Patrick, my bad. I'm bringing up coffee. No problem, man. Bring up coffee. This is Like I said, this is for you. These streams... Well, I have sort of like a discussion agenda, like, hey, this is what I you know want to share with you guys this week. Totally up to you guys. Like, drop whatever questions you want. <coughs> this is about hangs, y'all. All whiskey should be 100 proof. 100 to 10 to 100 to 15 is perfect, says Lone Wanderer. Not wrong, in my opinion, but I mean, I have had some amazing high proof whiskeys. Like last night, I had some. Batch A118, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. And yeah, it's wonderful. It's really, <laughs> really hot. Um, it's not, I mean, it, but it's balanced because that's such a flavorful, sweet, oaky, nutty, but in a good way, like almond paste, marzipan, some might say, but it's an almond paste candy. That's what marzipan is, if you ever wondered what that was. Giraffe 506, Droopy Whiskey, thoughts on Rhetoric 24. I was able to grab a bottle for a great price, but I haven't had it before. I couldn't pass on it. Uh, I've heard with the Rhetorics, you just got to like a well-aged whiskey. I mean, they're pretty good. And the price for that high of an age, like a 24-year-old whiskey, I bet you paid probably 125 for it if you got <coughs> a good price on it. Um, that's pretty cool. Like how many people can say they've had bourbon aged 24 years? Only people who probably bought rhetoric 24 or 25. So good on you. I'm totally open to it, but I've not had it. My cough is really bad today. I'm sorry, squad. Hold on. <coughs> yeah, $100 for rhetoric 24. That's a good buy. No doubt. Magoo 1500. Thanks for the super chat, dog. Cocktailing Angel's Envy and Diet Ginger Ale. Enjoying your live stream. Still working toward the neat thing. Well, you know what? It's a journey. Um, yeah, it took me a long time to get to coffee black. And to whiskey neat's kind of a same journey. When I started drinking coffee, I was young. I was super young. But it was, <laughs> give me the creamer. And my son is like this. Calvin, he's five. He likes coffee. He likes to make it every morning with me. But he wants to add the coffee cream. And he wants... He wants to add so much where that's pretty much all he tastes. And that was me growing up, too. And then in college, I was white mocha, like sugar. Like, I love the sugar all up in my coffee. Creamy, sugary coffee. And so now to the point where I only drink almost, well, almost exclusively black coffee because it's kind of my job. Um, and I have access to really phenomenal coffee. Um, you yeah, know, that just took a long time because... You know, drinking black coffee, even a light roast, if you're used to coffee with cream in it, like light roasted coffee almost tastes sour. Like it's got a lot of lemony, citric acid type stuff. And uh, yeah, it's almost kind of a sour profile in comparison to a dark roasted full body with cream coffee. So just embrace the journey. It'll be fine. You'll make it eventually. I recommend starting with a chill bourbon, though. That Evan Williams single barrel is probably a good place to start if you're like, I want to try and drink it neat. I'm not really ready. Like, it's, you know, 88 proof-ish. So sub-90, 
pretty chill whiskey, really accessible, sweet flavor profile. If you just, like, yeah, I was going to say, you could go with an 80 proofer, but like Beam is not a really accessible fla flavor profile at, at 80 or 90. Is it 90? I've never bought Beam White Label, but Basil Hayden is 80 proof, but it's not an accessible flavor profile either, and it's not very good. Certainly not a very good value, in my opinion. Scotch Comic, Droopy Whiskey, any Christmas cocktail recipes you can share that are your favorites? Uh, yes, open bottle pour whiskey. <laughs> I am not a cocktail expert. I would like to be just so I could play that card when I needed to. And when I was asked, I could give a wise answer. But I just have never invested the time to do it. I loved Whiskey Neat so much that I was just like, I don't really feel like I need to add anything to it. Well, it's like with coffee now. It's like, I like this a lot on its own. You know, I would almost prefer to drink bitters on their own and whiskey on its own versus mixing them together. Not that I would drink bitters on their own, but that's kind of my thought. Uh, there are some pretty rad cocktail mixers, though. Like, the mixer game has really exploded in the last few years. So, um, if you're a big fan of cocktails and you don't have a lot of time on your hands, I wouldn't look past the canned mixer stuff because they're investing high quality ingredients in that stuff to deliver pretty rad cocktail experience at home of course not all of them but there's enough reviews out there just give it a look all right well we're going to move on to our next topic again feel free to drop questions um wanted to do a little bit of re review on whiskey hunting season like whiskey hunting season over the fall, generally, kind of starts in September and rolls through December. It's like a time of uh, immense excitement for all of us. Like, can we get BTAC? Can we get Pappy? Can we get the Four Roses stuff? And it's like all promise, but slowly as the year goes on, it can kind of unwind. But it's helpful to look back over the fall and be like, hey, I found some cool bottles this year. And like today's a, a pretty good example of that where I was running around trying to get Christmas gifts after work, and uh, I heard yes, I heard earlier today that Stag Junior got dropped in my area, like you know cases in different stores. But it's such a highly sought after product. By the time I was able to stop at a few liquor stores, you know, working my way around town today, it's none. Like no, we had three bottles and it was sold out. You know, within. 45 minutes or something i'm like good grief man like that stinks i'm never gonna get this stuff um but i have a bottle i have a backup so i'm not a backup i have the one i've drank a drunk a few that's the last one so i really wanted to get a backup if i could so i could feel better about opening that one bottom line i couldn't get it but it's helpful to you know again step back and say well you know i was able to get a few masters keep um you know before they cleared the shelf and those are you know, those will at least be unicorn status here in short order. Um, and I also was able to get some other good bottles. So definitely in the comments, um, you know, in the chat or in the comments, drop, you know, what bottles were you able to find this fall? Some of you have been uh, DMing me on Instagram saying, hey, check out what I got. And I love that. Like, I want to celebrate with you guys when you're able to find a pretty rad bottle. That's awesome. So Stag Jr. definitely showed up in the feed a lot. A friend of mine in Florida got uh, George T. Stag, Big Boy Stag, off the shelf at retail. And, uh, you know, it was his first ever unicorn. And that's that's awesome. Like, and so certainly, like, are the unicorns maybe overhyped? Yeah, but, you know, the hunting is fun, you know. Um, and I think it'd be fun to try and, like, document the, the hunt. I, I even thought, and you guys can tell me if this is a good idea, that uh, should make it a t-shirt that says I hunt unicorns and it should be a, you know, a bottle of, of some kind of whiskey. Um, when I told my wife, I was I, like, I'm going to make a shirt that says I hunt unicorns. And she's like, why would you do that? I'm like, well, not actual unicorns. <laughs> it's not a violent violence thing, but anyway. Um, so I'm going to walk you guys through just how the, how the year went here in just a minute, but <clears throat> had a few questions come up. So I'm going to hit those real quick. Carlos, Droopy Whiskey, can you recommend coffee for someone who gets heartburn from espresso? I've been told darker roast has less acidity. Well, Carlos, that's a complicated question. Um, dark roast does have less acidity in that as you roast coffee, it kind of breaks down the compounds that when you extract them from the coffee delivers like a more acidic flavor profile. Um, 
but acidity does not equal bitterness. Like when I say acidity, I mean more like a citric acid, lemon, orange kind of flavor. Um, sometimes blackberries, tart raspberries, maybe even cranberry shows up a lot in coffee flavors. Um, so in dark roast, you don't get as much of that flavor. You get more like carbon. So what I've found sometimes, like people will tell me like, I can't drink Starbucks, it gives me heartburn. I think it's actually the carbon content in the dark roasted coffee because Starbucks does roast their coffees pretty dark. So it may be what is perceived as acid, but is actually carbon. So um, if you slide into my Instagram DMs and tell me what coffees specifically were causing heartburn, I may be able to recommend a alternative. But it is kind of a complicated situation. Fred, what is my unicorn? Well, I mean, many things are unicorns. Um, I was able to grab what I would, excuse me, consider a unicorn in the uh, Four Roses 2020 LE this year. Um, and I was very, very happy with that. I'm going to pop probably that one. I have the 2015 and the 2020. I'm going to pro- pop one of them, probably the 2020, when my third child, Adelaide, is born in March. So... Um, some other, sorry, I'm not able to read all the comments and talk at the same time. So again, if you have questions, don't hesitate to just throw that at Droopy Whiskey on there so I can be sure to see them. Uh, Nathan, I think Nathan's asking me this. Am I a fan of Ruby? I've had some Ruby Roasters. That's a coffee roasting company out in Western Wisconsin. Pretty solid stuff out of Ruby for sure. No doubt. All right. So going back to early fall, you know, sometimes some of the first stuff that actually gets distributed, <clears throat> that's harder to find, more allocated whiskey, is actually from Michter's. So this year, Michter's released it, released it, pfft, released 10-year rye, 10-year bourbon, and uh, toasted finish rye, which was barrel strength this year. So we didn't get a toasted bourbon from Michter's. We didn't get a barrel strength uh, bourbon from Michter's. Didn't get a barrel strength rye either, but we got the toasted barrel rye that is barrel strength. Um, and I saw the toasted barrel rye twice, but in neither occasion was it offered to me when I asked for it, which is fine because, you know, liquor stores got to take care of, you know, their peeps. I understand that. But early in the year, I was given the opportunity to buy this year's Michter's 10 rye, which out of the two, Michter's 10 bourbon and Michter's 10 rye, this Michter's 10 rye tends to get <coughs> more highly lauded. Um, so I, and I've not had this yet. So this will be probably a very soon bottle pop. Um, as I've had the Michter's 10 bourbon, really enjoyed it. Um, but that's how my year started. And I was like, you know, that's, that's cool. Um, and then it was only about a month and a half later that the other, um, what people don't always know that this is Michter's, but Bombergers, this is this year's Bombergers release. Um, this is also a Michter's product. This is a, a higher proof, 108 proof. Apparently, it's in the 8 to 10 year old range. Um, and I was able to get one of these. Same liquor store, actually. So I have made pretty good friends with um, the owners at one liquor store, and, and they hooked me up on the regular, which I appreciate, but I also. <laughs> Like, I bought Christmas gifts for some of my employees at their store, so I definitely invest in that relationship. I, I recommend you do, too, if, if you're hoping to come across some more allocated stuff. Um, but then I, 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 you know, didn't really find anything in, of note for, for quite some time. Um, when Elijah Craig Toasted launched, you know, definitely not unicorn status to me because it was all over Wisconsin. But I really wanted to try that, and I was able to get, you know, a few bottles of that. And I enjoy that. If you you want to hear more about my thoughts on Elijah Craig Toasted, just go watch my Elijah Craig video when all this is said and done. I assume we'll probably go to 9.30 or so tonight. But Elijah Craig Toasted was one of those that I think it's going to show up from time to time. If you haven't tried it um, and you really want to try it, go ahead and message me on Instagram, and maybe I can send you a sample. Um, but, uh, worth trying, I think it's, it's a love it or hate it kind of situation there. It's pretty oaky, but it's not mouth drying, comparable flavor profile. It's kind of what you'd think, you know, if you compare Woodford to Woodford double oaked, 
just compare Elijah Craig and imagine what that double oaked would taste like, and that's kind of what Elijah Craig toasted tastes like. So I was thrilled to get some of that. Um, and then throughout the year, you know, I was able to find some stuff that's cool, but not necessarily allocated in the same way that some of these other products are like the bullet blender select which i did a video on that really phenomenal four roses sourced juice um dickel bottled and bond which you have to want this kind of flavor profile but <laughs> i like it you know it, it works for me on certain occasions and stuff like that i was able to find um but as we got into the fall when btac came up and you know, I was like, there's no way. <laughs> I I have never been able to buy BTAC off the shelf. You know, I do have the one George T. Stagg up there, which that too is probably uh, next time my dad comes up or, you know, one of my brothers, that may be one we open um, and savor that one together. That would be special. Um, but I did stop into a very, very small liquor store when I was getting a haircut uh, in October, probably. And I was just looking around, as I do, and I started talking to the owner, and I was like, hey, how's it going? You know, I, I don't really be like, hey, man, you got, where's the beat? <laughs> I just try and talk to him, you know, and build a relationship. I went and saw him again today. Um, but we were talking about bourbon, eventually got there, and he said, are you looking for this one, this Four Roses? <laughs> I was like, holy crap, like, you know, I, I see so little um, of the unicorns that I got jacked. You know, I was like, oh, my gosh, man. Like, absolutely, I would love to love to buy that. But it was complicated. And it's complicated because in Milwaukee, the distributors of the whiskey are starting to tell the store owners that they shouldn't sell the products at MSRP. So it's like. Hey, here's this bottle of Four Roses, but don't sell it at the $150 suggested retail price because people will pay more than that. I don't know. It was like, well, what do I do here then with this guy? Because, like, she's right, the distributor who I met later that day, because he wanted to chat with the distributor first um, before he sold it to me. <laughs> um she had told him, you know, like, you, know, you can sell it. And, yeah, so, anyway, she was right. But then it puts me in a tough position because, like, do I want to pay secondary? No. Like, secondary prices on these whiskeys is a lot of money. For the Four Roses, it's, like, $400. For any BTAC, it's, like, $500. And how many of us really want to drink a $500 bottle of whiskey? Like, probably not many. I mean, we do want to drink the whiskey, but we don't want to spend that kind of money on it for sure. Like we got kids and stuff. So of course I wanted the whiskey, but, um, I negotiated with him and I did spend over, uh, MSRP a little bit, but well under secondary. Um, and I told him I would open it. I told him I would not trade it and I would not sell it. I would open it. And I told him I would open it for the birth of my daughter, and so that's why I'm going to open that one in March. So I didn't try not to sucker him. I was just honest with him. So honesty is the best policy there, but I think we're going to see more of this where these unicorns show up and they're never at retail price, which we do see that. We see that semi on the regular, but I think it's going to become the norm where because the market for these is so high and so many people are buying them and flipping them, like... If you're on Facebook, you probably see, if you're in bourbon groups, the day that some special bourbon is released in the area, people are then trying to sell it on the secondary market. So they're just buying it to sell it. And, like, I... So this is how business works, right? So is that a problem? Well, it's technically illegal. So <laughs> it's maybe a little bit of a problem. Uh, but I don't want to be like, you shouldn't do that, um, because it's kind of like free market stuff. And I like free market, but I also like being legal. But it's just tough. It's it's a tough deal. So I'm not going to hate, but like I just understand that this is getting to be a more complex situation. And so I probably should not expect to come across the Uber unicorns and be able to pay a reasonable price for them. It's probably not going to happen. So... Uh, I do like trading, you know, trading is, uh, 
a fun way to be like, well, you know, I was able to find something, but you got something I might like more. So can we just swap bottles? I think that if you got some friends who you can do that with, that's a pretty cool game to play. And then you kind of hunt together. Um, and then you can, you know, if somebody opens it, you all can try it together. That's the best case scenario. So the four roses was definitely my, my highlight in hunting season. As the months have gone on and we've gotten closer to Christmas, you know, I've been stoked to be able to find some other stuff um, that I'm just thrilled to drink, like uh, Old Forester Single Barrels, Barrel Strength, uh, 1792 12 Year was a pickup this year. Like, a lot of this was a pickup this year. Um, oh, that Knob Creek 12, which that was uh, Breaking Bourbon's Whiskey of the Year. So yeah, lots of lots of fun stuff. I mean, there's cool whiskeys out there if you know what to look for. And what I'd also say is if you guys are ever, you know, in a liquor store and you're new to whiskey, like don't just buy it, like unless you know. And if you don't know, just send me a quick Instagram message. I'll try and respond quickly. Um, but I've had some of you reach out for recommendations. Totally happy to do that as long as the channel's not massive massive so as much as i can i'm totally willing to help you guys out um while i don't have bajillions of bottles i know a lot about um you know what a bottle should cost you and what it might be worth but just do it if you intend to drink it <laughs> don't tell me if you should buy it if you're then gonna swap it because you know uh, i might be right behind you trying to buy it to drink it so all right so that's basically how hunting season went uh overall uh, i cannot complain got some really great bottles um and because i had a lot of time at home i started a whiskey youtube channel and it's been going great um you know my five bourbons that i think you have to have video that went out on monday really has done well and so the support from you all has been amazing you know these streams just 70 people hanging out chatting whiskey with me like that's awesome i really appreciate it and looking forward to more all right, let's pause and hit some questions here. David, Droopy Whiskey, when might we see some Keep It Neat Glens? Where am I late to the party and you've already done it and just haven't seen it? Well, no, the only thing I've done is that t-shirt. So it's really like a good question for you guys is, you know, hit in the chat. If you have an idea for like Droopy Whiskey merch, which I've got a lot of design ideas. I'm never just going to put Droopy Whiskey on it because obviously you probably don't want to buy crap with just my name on it. You probably want something that says that looks cool or says some funny bourbon thing. Um, but if you prefer like t-shirts or, you know, hoodies or, or Glen Cairns or something like that, put it in the chat. Cause I'm going to use that. Cause I definitely will be making some new stuff here in the future. Um, at Stone Creek coffee, my day job, that's one of the things that I, I do is work with our design and marketing team on all of our products. So from our coffee to our merch. And I love that sort of creative work. So I'm definitely going to do more of it with whiskey. Fred, Droopy Whiskey, have you had any Starlight juice? No, but I'm excited to try that. And Starlight's one, another one of those up-and-coming distilleries that's supposed to be pretty good. I think the Speakeasy. So the Speakeasy is a Wisconsin Facebook group that's just about the, the hobby. Um, it's not trading or anything like that. Good group of folks on there. And I think they did a pick recently with a liquor store near Madison through Starlight. So definitely want to try Starlight soon. Got a store pick that tastes like vanilla and strawberries. Wow. Beth again said, I saw Pappy 15 for $7.95. Had to pass. I was wrong. It was $1,400. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, $7.95 is a tough pass on that. It's so much money. But if you had $7.95, because you may never see it again. But it's way over retail. Like, it's way over retail. But $1,400 is an easy pass. Yeah. No, no freaking way. <laughs> $1,400. Oh, my gosh. Matt Schwanda. Uh, Droopy Whiskey. Came across EC Toasted at Sam's and passed on it for some reason. Hoping to find another bottle. Good luck, man. Um, I do think they're going to release it again, though. It seems like it was a relatively well-received release. And it's something they can definitely duplicate. They're just going to buy some more barrels. And all they did was double barrel Elijah Craig's small batch. So totally look for that from them in the future not that i've asked them i'm just assuming tom lynch speaking of rex thanks for the new riff uh recommendation the single barrel rye is great youngish but very spicy yeah their stuff is still around four years but really lots of flavor in new riff in spite of the lack of age jimmy droopy whiskey do any trades this year i did actually um so the <coughs> um 
mirror image here. The George C. Stag and the old Four Roses came when I swapped a Booker's 30th for those. So, yeah, I, I do some, some trading, some gift. I give it to them and they give it to me. <laughs> All right. Uh, check Amon's and Winlake. They have three store picks of Starlight. Holy crap. So Amon's is great if you're ever in southern Wisconsin near Lake Geneva. Um, Amon's is a pretty solid liquor store. Great prices. They do solid picks for sure. I've got an Eagle Rare uh, store pick from Amon's. Great liquor store for sure. Eric says you want a t-shirt that states, I know Drew P. Whiskey. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, I guess. Fred says I will send you some of the two Starlights. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. That would be fun. I'll taste those on live. One thing I would say is a few of you have been so generous. Like tonight... Uh, here in a little bit, I'm going to taste a smoke wagon, uncut, unfiltered. Um, and that's the sample I got from, uh, I got to get the name right. I'm so bad at names, but this guy is so generous. Um, Robert, Robert Chino Lutz. So Robert sent me this and then Woodenville Port Finished. And if you guys ever send me samples, like I'm going to go live either on YouTube or on Instagram. By the way, follow me on Instagram at Drew P. Whiskey and I'll taste it live. Like, you guys probably want to know what I think about it if you send it to me. So if there's anything you want to know what I think about it, um, just send it to me. I, I really appreciate that. So um, just send me a DM on Instagram and I'll send you my address. That's very kind of you guys. Uh, Kiko says, we want Droopy Whiskey on everything and we'll buy it, even coffee mugs. Dude, you guys are just ridiculously nice. Um, which I would say I really appreciate, um, as I like read my comments, I read every single comment that comes through my videos. Um, and by and large, you guys are just so (laughs) wonderful, (laughs) like so nice and affirming. Um, and hopefully it's just because, you know, I'm doing something that you like, um, you know, and there's a few people who are clearly just trolling, like trying to find a problem with literally everybody. That I do not appreciate. If somebody's offering constructive criticism, which a few people have, I appreciate that. Like, I just want to know ways that I can make this stuff better. It's totally just for fun. Like, it does take time, of course, and, you know, it takes some money to buy a webcam or whatever. But it's it's mainly for fun. So whatever you guys uh, want, just send me some suggestions, recommendations. Uh, by the way, another way you can support the channel, there's 77 people watching. Uh, if you wouldn't mind smashing the like button, if you're digging what I'm laying down, I appreciate that. That helps, you know, just generate some exposure for the vid. Uh, John Wickwicky. Dude, that, if that's your last name, that is a dope last name. Uh, Droopy Whiskey, any recommendation bourbon? Wife wants to try it. If she likes it, may have more budget to buy more. <laughs> Dude, nice. Um... So, do I have a recommendation for what you should buy in effort to get the wife to like it? Yeah, I come back to Evan Williams Single Barrel because it's so, and I I shudder to use this word, but smooth. Meaning it's not offensive. Like, it doesn't have a heavy rye note, so it's not crazy spicy. It's not crazy nutty. It's sweet enough, um, and it has a little bit of nuttiness. It has enough age where it doesn't taste young, so you don't get this, like, kind of grainy, sour taste. Um, what else would you guys say? So if we're trying to hook up our boy here, uh, Wick Wicky, with a solid uh, bourbon that his wife is going to like, what would you recommend? I say Evan Williams Single Barrel, but I keep coming back to that. I don't want to sound like a broken record. So we'll hit John's recommendations in the comments here in a sec. But Carlos says, is Rip 10 considered a unicorn? Anything Van Winkle is considered a unicorn for sure. First year hunting, and I have Rip 10, Weller 12, and Stag Jr. so far. Carlos, where are you, dog? <laughs> like, you're crushing it. <laughs> yeah, Rip 10 and Weller 12. I mean, Weller 12, while probably doesn't deserve unicorn status, is pretty close to that. So, um, Rip 10 I've tried and really enjoyed. Stag Jr. is amazing, too. Like, Stag Jr. is worth getting if you can. Um, I did stand beside behind somebody in line yesterday they paid $120 for Stag Jr. I would not do that. Um, that was a funny exchange, actually. I'll have to come back to that in a minute. Let me see if there's any more questions. Okay, no. All right. So before we do this mail call, uncut, unfiltered smoke wagon tasting, I'm going to tell you this Stag Jr. story. Hydration is key. Okay, so 
I'm in a little restaurant in Milwaukee that has a bottle shop. Um, I had posted on my Instagram that I saw a picture of Yellow Label, Redemption Rye, Barrel Proof, the old stuff. And so I was trying to get that, but it wasn't there. Anyway, so I'm, while I'm in the liquor store, I see a bottle of Stag Jr. in the shelf, and the guy in front of me grabs it. And it's got a $120 price tag on it. And I'm going, my gosh, like, no, I'm not going to buy that even if this guy sets it down. But he's on the phone, and he's talking to somebody, like, as we do, you know, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> but um, he's there with his son. And so the son's probably my age, maybe a little younger. And, uh, you know, he gets off the phone and he says, you know, I'm going to buy it and I'm going to trade it to somebody's name. We're going to swap it. He's going to give me a Weller 107. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> and I couldn't let him leave. Like, I didn't want to be a jag. But I said, hey, buddy, like, I want to let you know, like, Weller 107, like, I, you know, the trade value on that's like 80 or $90 at the most. Like, it's not... $120. He's like, well, good luck getting it. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I've got a couple at home <laughs> that I got for, you know, in that range, like trade value, $80 was the trade value on mine because I couldn't buy them off the shelf either. I had to trade for my Weller 107. And, uh, yeah, so anyway, just be careful. Like, no, try and know what the values are. And if you're ever not sure, just reach out. I'm happy to make sure you don't get screwed. Mike says, is my clock backwards? What's it look like, dog? <laughs> the clock is the, the, um, the clock is the focal point of a lot of comments in my feed. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you guys, I, I'm probably not going to ever put it in the normal video, but in this live feed, I'll tell you, because you're probably the hardcore neat nation peeps who are watching this uh, right now. The clock was here when I moved in. So the bar setup was here. I did a bar tour in my Rare Breed Bottle Pop uh, live stream last week. And uh, it runs backwards. Yeah, so it's set up completely backwards. And then, you know, runs. It tells time accurately. I mean, actually, I didn't change it for daylight savings time. So it's technically an hour ahead. But, yeah, it runs correctly just backwards. So is it a little bit of a mind trip? Yes. Um, but David... Thought you weren't responding to clock comment. Yeah, you know, but at the same time, people want to know. It is kind of fun to just have back there and make it a thing. Uh, somebody recommended that I should make a t-shirt that said it's 5 o'clock somewhere and put a clock with whiskey and have the clock be backwards, like my clock. Yeah, that's a pretty cool t-shirt idea, I think. Uh, Tom Lynch, okay, last time telling the clock story. Needs to become droopy whiskey lore. All right, fair. All right, we'll, we'll commit today, today, in this video, because, I mean, let's face it, I just started, I just hit 2,000 subs, I think, which is pretty rad. Yeah, I think I hit 2,000 subs uh, last week or earlier this week. Um, so hopefully, like, as we go, channel grows, but maybe you, squad, or anybody who stumbles on this old video will, will hear my explanation of the clock. Let it be known that today was the last day that I shared the clock story. Mm. Yeah, good, good stuff in the decades. Now, let's move on to mail call. So again, Robert Lutz. Robert, thank you, man, for sharing this smoke wagon. Now, smoke wagon, if you guys don't know, Las Vegas Distillery. Uh, this is not smoke wagon juice. Uncut, unfiltered is a bottling of MGP, like many, many distilleries do, like Belmead does. Now, I like Belmead. Um, Belmead is generally six to eight year old, where, excuse me, the general story is that Smoke Wagon is four to six to eight blend of, you know, barrel proof MGP, uncut, unfiltered. So this one's 113.9 proof. That's a good proof point. That's in my money zone. But they've been getting a lot of uh, a lot of solid rep. I don't know news. They're making news for the quality of this whiskey, um, which I love to see. That their brand is pretty cool. Kind of matches Las Vegas. 
It is not distributed in Wisconsin, though, which is why I've not been able to get it. So I'm going to sip this, give it a tasty taste, and then I'll taste it next to the Belmede, and we'll just see how they compare. Very perfumey, like floral, floral nose. Very nice, sweet, floral, perfumey. William Wiley, where's a good place to get sample bottles and what size? I assume four ounce. Four ounce is a huge sample. If people are given four ounce samples, they are, I mean, they're saints. <laughs> they're really generous, kind people. Um, mine are pretty similar to this, I think. This is maybe a two ounce sample. Probably. I'd have to weigh it. Um, but you can get one or two ounce sample jars off Amazon. Just search Amazon, you know, two ounce glass sample thing, vial, glass vials. That's like something to search. But just try a couple keywords on Amazon. You'll be able to track some down, no doubt. Tom said just ordered some on Amazon. Yep, that's where I ordered mine. I used them to make an advent calendar last year. I ordered a bunch and then I partnered with three two friends so there were three of us and we bottled up six samples of 25 whiskeys and so we each had one for ourselves and we each had one to give and that was really cool so um, I've got out because of that um, more vials than I know what to do with but I, I shared some some love today I sent out some samples so yeah, really super perfumey rose type, like rose water is what I'm getting on the nose. That smells like whiskey, rose water whiskey. Mm, really good, butterscotch, caramel. You get some of the tonguey effervescence, which is probably difficult to understand because it barely means anything. By that, I mean it makes my tongue tingle. Lots of that up on my tongue right now with this smoke wagon. Um, proof, I definitely get that. I don't get a lot of young notes in the whiskey, though, where, where it feels young on my tongue. I don't get a lot of grain. I don't get sawdust, which sawdust is a like very prevalent uh, flavor note in a lot of very young craft whiskeys. Don't get that in this at all. It tastes And it's MGP, so it's going to be distilled really, really well. But not grainy, not sawdusty. Is sweet, is a little bit spicy. It's not amazing, but it's really good. Like, if it's in the $40 to $50 price point, I'm all over it. If it's $60, i am like, okay, yeah, I probably would like to have one bottle around, support a small distillery, tastes good. If it's more than that, I'm going to struggle to drop it, particularly when I can get root, new riff, barrel strength, single barrels for 50 bucks. And that said, this Bell Mead was 60 bucks, um, and I have generally really liked the Bell Mead. It's a little bit older. Now let's do the comparison here. So get me another Glen Cairn here. Again, we're comparing them because Bell Mead is MGP too. So just making sure we're clear. We now have Smoke Wagon, uncut, unfiltered, right here, which is four, six, and eight year barrel strength MGP, and then we have Bell Mead, the newest reserve release from Bell Mead, which is near cast strength MGP, six to eight years. The nose that you, you're getting more oak on the nose, more like candy sweetness less spice than you get in the smoke wagon. But I know you get spice on the palate on this. Noticeably sweeter. And in, in comparison, because I just came off the uncut unfiltered, this did not taste very spicy. I know it's spicy, so this means this is a spice bomb. And it does taste younger than the Bell Mead. But, you know, they're both really, really good. It really depends on what you like. If you like something with a little more oak and, you know, caramel, then the Bell Mead would probably, you know, warrant your purchase over the Smoke Wagon. If you want something punchy and spicy with a lot of spunk, <laughs> then Smoke Wagon may be your jam. 
yeah, it does taste r really good. Like that smoke wagon is a really good whiskey. Uh, hard to choose, actually. I think it would depend on the day, which is why I try not to have favorite whiskeys. It's so often when I come down to the bar and I'm like, what should I drink tonight? Or what should I bottle pop? You know, it's like, well, what do I feel like? Like, what do I really want to drink? Do I want something spicy? Do I want something oaky? Do I want something fruity? Do I want something floral? Um, yeah, it makes it tough. But that's why in my most recent video, the one that launched on Monday about the five bourbons I think you need to have, I didn't do it based on, you know, how much the bottle is or how hard it is to find. I did it based on flavor profile. So we had the we started with the everyday bourbon and then we did weeded, low rye, and high rye because there's a big flavor spectrum in there. And I said, I want to hit each point in this flavor spectrum. So it's a bit of a different spin off of those only five bourbons you need to have videos, but I mean, I guess people like it okay. All right, hit some more questions here. Magoo 15 Hundo, Droopy Whiskey, seen 1792 High Rye? I have seen it years ago. Um, I passed on it because I was like, that's interesting. Another 1792 release. Um, but I've never tried it, actually. It is an old bottle. It hasn't been released for years now. Uh, Droopy Whiskey, are they the same mash bill? Well, Bell Mead is a blend of the two high rye mash bills from MGP. I don't know what the mash bill on the Smoke Wagon is. If anybody wants to just Google Smoke Wagon uh, mash bill, Smoke Wagon uncut, unfiltered mash bill, you may be able to find it. And if so, drop it in the comments. Uh, Okie dokie. So my, my, my boy, Dan Allen, is in the chat. He's the bat hound softball reviews and tips. What would be a good whiskey for a softball game? So it's a good question, Dan, for sure. Glad you made it. Um, glad you're here. Hope you're doing well. Um, anything but Evan Williams Black Label which or very old Barton. Um, no, those are both fine whiskeys, but I know they're what you drink, so that's why I'm giving you crap. Uh, for a softball game... Uh, if you're watching or playing, <laughs> if I'm at a softball game, I need to be able to run the bases and watch the ball come at me. So you're probably not going to want to go barrel proof. Um, I'd say Buffalo Trace. There you go. If not Elijah Craig, because Elijah Craig works in pretty much every situation ever. Brian Kramer says, how much would you pay for the older Bellmead Reserve with batch and proof written on label is it better than the new reserve some people say it is dude but you have to do a side by side i think everybody favors what is older like there's some this weird human trait that if it's old it's good and it's i think because we align things in our minds with the way we felt in a particular moment and if we don't feel that exact same way then we're gonna interpret what we're tasting or feeling or experiencing now as somehow worse um so I don't know. I enjoyed the old cast strength version and this new version equally, I think. <laughs> but I did not do a side by side. You know, nothing tells you what's better like doing a blind tasting. Love doing a blind tasting. It just helps be like, oh yeah, I like that better. And you know, you're not tainted by your perception of what's what. It's like if I did this, which I should do, this decades up against uh, that Kentucky Spirit single barrel I have, which is, again, upstairs. I left it up there. That would be interesting. <laughs> like, which one do you like better? The, you know, the unicorn status bottle or this single barrel you can get any day? Granted, it's a single barrel, so not all are going to taste exactly the same, but who knows? All right. Um... Got one more topic we're going to tackle today. Again, thank you to, um, sorry, thank you to Robert. Robert, dude, I cannot remember your name for the life of me. It's, it's my dad's middle name. But Robert, thank you. I sincerely appreciate the sample, dude, and for your support of the channel. If you guys want to um, support the channel, you can super chat, hit that dollar sign below, and buy me a drink. I appreciate that. Um, you can also buy a t-shirt. There is a link in the show description um, 
to my Etsy store. They're not in hand yet, so do keep in mind that those will ship out on January 2nd. So they are getting printed right now. Uh, they are going fast, which I appreciate, but I can always order more. So um, you can support the channel either of those ways. Also, there's if you love coffee, you're a coffee geek. That's how I introduced this video. I'm assuming you're coffee geeks. Um, you can go to stonecreekcoffee.com. That's my day job. I'm the director of operations there. And you can actually get 15% off and free shipping when you use the code Drew P. Whiskey. So you're welcome. Good coffee over there. Um, if you guys like dark roast, Three Volcanoes is probably the best dark roast ever. But again, hit me up on Instagram for coffee recommendations. This isn't a coffee show. <laughs> but I, I feel like every time I do a live feed, we're going to come back to coffee and that's just fine. All right. Last topic for the day, whiskey tastings or whiskey nights. Yeah, we're in the middle of COVID. It sucks. I'm not hosting whiskey nights because COVID and my wife is pregnant. And, you know, I prefer not to get anybody sick. I'm trying to be kind, gracious, whatever. Um, but this is something that I highly encourage people to do. And it's crazy, crazy easy to do it and, and do it well. So here's what I do. Droopy coffee, Eric Sawyer. Nice. Here's what I do when I'm trying to set up a whiskey night. Um, number one is make it relatively casual. During one of my whiskey nights, and I think this may have been the one that Dan, the Bat Hound guy, came to, um, I set up a TV with a monitor, and I broke down every whiskey we tasted with its age and its mash bill and its distillery, and I put it up on a monitor as we went through and tasted these whiskeys. Was that fun? Yeah, I get. I think for me, it was definitely the most like bourbon geeky of the entire crowd. It may have been intimidating if you were just showing up for whiskey night at Drew's house. Um, what I do recommend is something a little bit more casual, and that is first off, pick a topic you're going to cover, and by topic I mean a category of whiskey that you want to taste with people. So it could be. Well, we've done bottled in bond bourbons. We did one where we just did Four Roses single barrels. And most of them were the standard OBSVs. So we had like five different 100 proof OBSV Four Roses single barrels. You could do uh, rye. You could do uh, whiskeys above $60. You could do whiskeys below $20. You could do scotch. You could do peated scotch. You could do, you know, sherry scotch. Um, you know, any number of different things. But pick one and then create a Facebook event and invite your friends and say, all right, friends, here's what we're going to do. The theme of this whiskey night is bottled and bond. And so what everybody has to do is bring a bottle of bottled and bond whiskey and, uh, you know, we're going to open it and we're going to taste it together. And then list out a bunch of recommendations for people. Like, here's something you can bring. Here's what I recommend you bring. And if you don't know, just reach out to me. My rule is that actually not everybody has to bring a bottle. If it's your first time to one of my whiskey nights, you're, you don't have to bring a bottle. We'll leave that to the people who are veterans. If uh, you are a veteran, then yeah, just show, you, it's generally perform to show up and not bring a bottle. Unless you're my friend Kirk, who just shows up to be with people. He doesn't actually like whiskey that much, but he comes to literally every whiskey tasting. I mean, Kirk is like my brother, so I let him... I kind of let it slide with him, but then I always give him crap for it. Um, so everybody brings a bottle, unless they're brand new, of the particular category that you selected. And then, you know, everybody comes, and I, I set out one warm-up whiskey. So when people show up, everybody has a little nip of some whiskey to get their palate adjusted. And we just let the conversations go. Like, I don't actually direct a conversation about the whiskey. People just talk, and that's kind of awesome. It's because talking is good. <laughs> talking is helpful. Top, talking brings us together, and people will talk about what's important to them. And you should, I don't think we should ever, like, give people crap for what's important to them, even if it's something we, like, vehemently disagree with, is we should seek to know why it's important to them. Like, the thing that's going to help us come together and learn and grow and even change is by truly seeking to understand each other. And, like, this combative mentality probably isn't super helpful so whiskey night's great because nobody's in a combative mood when they come to whiskey night um and they tend to even get less combative <laughs> as the night goes on they get more talkative and they even get more passionate but 
not very combative. So that's great. So the conversations just happen. And then one by one, I'll start, I'll take a whiskey and I'll open it and I'll say, okay, guys, here's this whiskey. Here's what's cool about it. You know, it's from this place. It's this mash bill. It's this age. It's this cost, whatever. And then we pass it around and people drink and, you know, like, oh, yeah, this is interesting and blah, blah, blah. And then the conversations go. They just keep happening. And then I'll wait a little while, and then I'll take another bottle and pass it around. Everybody takes a little pour, and the conversations continue to go. And it's awesome. It's so cool. (laughs) I mean, by the end of the night, you have to have some corn chips around. (laughs) You can't push people out the door. you got to be careful, um, for sure. I I, I always start the night with saying, please be careful, monitor yourself, and if you need to sleep on my couch, that is totally acceptable. Because I'd much rather people do that than drive inappropriately. <clears throat> but I highly recommend if you're into whiskey, you should do a whiskey night. Um, you know, I tend to do them with my close friends. Um, but I want to do some post-COVID that are more like channel. Like if you're in the area and you want to do a droopy whiskey night, um, will it be as intimate? Probably not because we don't know each other. But will it be cool? Yeah, it'd be dope. It'd be awesome. Um, so definitely want to do some more stuff like that down in my bar, share some stuff post-COVID here, which the vaccine's making its way out. I'm excited about that and uh, looking forward to whiskey nights because I'm a extrovert. I'm a Enneagram 3 extrovert, ENTJ. I want to be with people, <laughs> and uh, this sucks. But this is awesome because getting to interact with you all, sure, I can't see your faces, but to, you know get your questions and chat about some of my love is definitely fueling. It's helpful for me. So thank you all. Uh, got a super chat here. Very generous from giraffe five Oh six. Thanks, man. Thanks for the great live stream. As good as, uh, as good as hosting a whiskey night, pretty dang close. The benefit of doing these in lieu of a whiskey night is that, um, there's 80 people here and I could not fit 80 people in my basement. I think we'd have a fire code issue. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right. So that is that's what I got. Anybody else have any other uh, questions? If you're dropping questions in and I haven't seen them, just be sure to tag me. Go at Drew P. Whiskey and then ask the question so I can see it. Tom Riley says, have you had 1792-12? I have not. I've heard great things, and we may have to bottle pop that here in the coming weeks because I was able to get a bottle from liquor store... Pretty close by, just off the shelf on Black Friday, actually. So I just stopped in early, and uh, they had put some special whiskeys out, Sweet Wheat and uh, 12-year. It was pretty pretty cool. Uh, Evans says, thoughts on Nika from the Barrel. I have drunk a bottle of Nika from the Barrel, and I, I have another one as well. But I've got two bottles of scotch open, and this is very similar to scotch. It's a malt, malted barley-based whiskey, sherry, sherried, malted barley-based whiskey. It's Japanese, and it's very good. So one of the downsides of scotch is it doesn't come high proof, um, which sucks. But that one does, and it's not scotch, it's Japanese. So a comparable whiskey, so this would be a fun side-by-side, is the Aberlour Abunad, I think that's how you say that. It's a cask strength, sherried scotch, um, which is similar to the Nika from the barrel. Both of them, when I had them, were really, really good. Really sweet, very dessert-y type whiskeys. Um, but the proof helps. Like, it helps cut through the sweetness, actually, and add some heat that's helpful. So if you ever have a chance to buy Nika whiskey from the barrel, $70, I think, is kind of that expected price point. I would do it. It's pretty good. Jimmy, uh, any mead in your bar? No. I've had mead one time in my entire life, which was quite good. It was in Guatemala on a coffee sourcing trip. So I'm on a coffee farm, and they made mead there with honey from the beehives. Really cool story. So we were, like, drinking mead and eating snacks in the middle of these, like, massive bamboo. Like, it was a... We were on a coffee farm, but there was these big, like, bamboo... Kind of turned it into this big overhang. Really, really cool. And I had some cool experiences on coffee sourcing trips for sure. And I haven't been able to travel at all for a year now and won't be able to travel this winter, which is kind of prime coffee travel season. So that sucks. I'm going to miss that. Uh, Shooterick says, looking for a good rye around 100 bucks and under. Oh, well, you've got a good budget there. Okay. 
if you can find so redemption just released a new 10 year old barrel strength rye that's 10 year old mgp barrel strength rye you should be able to find that for 90 to 100 buy that if you can um if you're looking for something cheaper uh the single barrel knob creek or not well knob creek single barrel rye is very very good um so would do that even the knob creek cask strength rye very good uh the new riff single barrel barrel strength rise also really good so lots of options there really depends i'd ask you what rise have you had that you liked and then i would maybe use that to point you in a better direction the dock droopy whiskey what is best bourbon for new year's eve well i mean i'm probably gonna have a couple pours of this decades between christmas maybe new year's starting the new year right um so barrel releases a new year bourbon every year so barrel they're awesome you know cast strength blenders that's what they do um it's not distributed in wisconsin but if you can you know go to if you're in illinois binnies or you know one of these big big box liquor stores that generally distribute barrel products and you're able to get their new year release that'd be a fun one and the name matches uh Tom, recommendation for Christmas dinner. Will it rye, Old Weller Antique, or Peerless Small Batch Rye, Beef Tenderloin for dinner? Well, I did recommend uh, in my, like, the seven whiskeys you need for Christmas, I said go Old Forester 1920. Now, if you're telling me to pick between Will it rye, Old Weller Antique, or Peerless Small Batch Rye, I would go Will it rye, though, uh, especially with beef. That spiciness might complement well. I think your old Weller antique is going to get taken over by the flavors. Peerless small batch I have not had, so I can't say. All right, we're at nine sixteen. We've been going an hour and sixteen minutes, um, which that's a that's a pretty good run. Covered our agenda for tonight. Let me ch- just check my notes here, squad. Make sure I got everything. Uh, yeah, cool. Uh, any other questions? Otherwise, I'm going to shut it down and go hang out with my wife for a little bit. But just want to thank you all again for tuning in for tonight. Um, and you know what I'll do? You guys can see on the shelf behind me. So give me a shout out in the, the chat here. Guys, I've got this sorted by top chat and not live chat. So I may have missed all kinds of questions. If I did, my bad. Um, but if you see a bottle not on this tier that you think I should bottle pop next week, drop it in the live chat, and then um, I will send out an Instagram poll over the next couple days, and we'll get the bottle pop for next week's live chat figured out. A couple questions here. Shooterix, I've had Wild Turkey and Michter's Rye so far. I know only two, but I've been really liking them and looking for something with more rye flavor. Uh, yeah, if you want more rye than Michter's rye. Michter's rye is kind of a mellow rye, I gotta say that. Um, more rye. Um, so the Knob Creek is gonna get you, like, a balanced rye with oak. Um, if you haven't had Knob Creek rye, try that. I think that's a good next step. You get a lot of cinnamon, like, a lot of kind of baking spices in Knob Creek rye. Good, good option. And you should be able to find that relatively easily so if you can get a knob creek rice single barrel that would be swell um if you can't just get the standard knob creek rye it'll be great uh lone wanderer says why is pea berry so expensive that's a coffee question which is fine so a pea berry so a coffee (laughs) i'll try and be brief coffee grows on a tree in cherries it looks like a legitimate cherry and the part you roast is the pit of that cherry and most of the time one coffee cherry holds two beans or two you know the pit it comes in two pieces in a pea berry that pit is only one piece and so that's abnormal and so in the coffee sorting after they've picked it and they've like removed the outside of the fruit they then sort the size of the beans and the very very smallest tend to be these pea berries so there's not very many in an overall crop and most of the time they don't taste as good um in kenya particularly sometimes like they actually prize those particular beans and they can actually taste quite good so um you know it they tend to be expensive because they're rare 
Um, and because to get a good one is difficult. And because if you do, it's often from Kenya, which getting coffee from Kenya is very expensive because it's East Africa. So that's pea berries in a very quick nutshell. Chase Therapy Services, Droopy Whiskey. Anything very similar to Stag Jr. you would recommend? Uh, Elijah Craig, Barrel Proof. Yep. It's not super similar to Stag Jr. Like, because that Buffalo Trace profile, I, I haven't had any distilleries where I'm like, that's kind of like Buffalo Trace. Uh, except Bowman, actually. So, But Bowman doesn't have a barrel strength product, dang it. Bowman, get your crap together. Let's go. Uh, but the closest in quality level to Stag Jr. is Elijah Craig Barrel Proof for sure. So definitely would recommend that if you haven't had it. Fred says, thanks, brother. Merry Christmas. You too, dog. Appreciate that. Carlos, have a great night. Neat nation. Neat nation. Thanks, squad. Um, wow, lots of stuff. Merry Christmas to you all. For those passing along Christmas wishes, yes, very much. It's an important holiday for me. Um, yeah, I'm a committed Christian, so Christmas and Easter are you know very important to who I am. Uh, John White says, Droopy Whiskey, Bottle Pop Weller 107. Great recommendation. That is a good idea. Uh, Shooter X Woodford Rye or Old Forester Rye. Old Forester Rye is very banana-y, like very sweet. I don't get a lot of rye on that, but, you know, taste is subjective. So, uh, What's a decent price for Stag Jr.? Saw for 99 Is it worth it at that price? Man, that's tough. Um, you know, MSRP on it is 60 that's what peeps are kind of supposed to sell it for. So 99 is really high. Um, I would sit there and him and haw for a long time, probably. If you've never had it, sure, and, and you got a hondo, you want to drop on a great whiskey, go for it. Um, I would, I would second-guess myself. Um, but your call, dude. It's not crazy given the secondary value and the fact that you can't find it, but it is high. Matt, Droopy Whiskey, have you had an Old Forester barrel proof single barrel? Is it worth $84? Um, depends. One I had was not. One I had is. Um, so try and sample it if you can. Some <coughs> stores that do barrel picks will have an open bottle behind the counter, and you can ask them, like, do you have an open bottle? Can I try it? Um, so, yeah, it might be. Don't know. Pop the Willet. Uh, that will it's pretty good. I do have a lot of rise open right now, though. Uh, Tom Lynch is pointing me up to pop the willet. Yeah, yeah, right, got it, cool. Uh, Fifty dollars here in Idaho. What is? Sorry, it's hard for me to track <laughs> from comment to comment and question to question. All right. Eric says he's similar to me, not a big fan of the banana flavors. I don't mind the banana. I have to get be in the mood for it, though, and it's just not my favorite. You know, I, I tend to prefer, like, red fruit notes if you can get, like, raspberries and blackberries and strawberries, which you'll get sometimes in Four Roses. You'll get sometimes in Buffalo Trace cherries. You know, cherry shows up in Buffalo Trace a lot. I get peaches sometimes in Buffalo Trace. And then I like the, you know, roasted nuts. Not like roasted peanuts. I mean like candied roasted nuts like you get at Cabela's. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to Cabela's <laughs> and go into their little fudge shop and get candied roasted nuts. And then you'll be like, oh my gosh, these are amazing. <laughs> I'm not talking about like roasted nuts out of a can um, that you buy off the shelf at the grocery store. Uh, Chase says... Droopy Whiskey, the stag, $50 here in Idaho. I would pay up to 94 at the way it drinks. Yeah, yeah, 50 to 90 is much more reasonable. 50 yeah, you buy that every single day. Don't see Stag Jr. for $50 and not buy it. Ben uh, does say Bowman is Buffalo Trace. That is correct. It is Buffalo Trace distilled, and then it's aged in, I think, West Virginia or something. So um, not exactly Buffalo Trace, but pretty much Buffalo Trace. So Bowman, yeah, I, I'll tell you guys this, and I need to go buy one of these because they're quite good um, before it's ruined for everybody. But Bowman Single Barrel is relatively easy to find. And if you ever are looking for a Blanton's substitute, does it come in the sexy Blanton's bottle? No. But Bowman Single Barrel is a really, really good Blanton's substitute in terms of flavor profile. So you're welcome. Pop Skull says, dude, love your videos. What do you recommend giving somebody who loves Jack Daniels to help them expand their horizons? Literally anything. <laughs> um, you know, if they like Jack, they probably like the banana profile. So probably something from that family. Go Old Forester Statesman 
50 to 55 bucks. Um, not super high proof, but really good whiskey out of Old Forester. So that's, I mean, in the Old Forester standard releases, I like 1920 and then Statesman and then 100. So 1920 is great, but it's really high proof. So give them Statesman and see how they, see how they like that. All right, squad. It was fun. Um, feel like I'm getting a little dehydrated. I drank all my water. Um, and like I said, I was going to go chill with my wife for a little bit, but pretty rad way to spend a Wednesday night with you all. Um, I know there's other, some, there's some other whiskey tube streams happening right now, but just to recap, uh, if you find wild Turkey decades for 150 or less, it's a pretty special bottle. Uh, and probably worth getting. I'm stoked that I got one. It was fun to pop it on the stream. And then the Smoke Wagon Uncut Unfiltered is a really, really solid whiskey. Um, I don't know what the MSRP on that is, but um, it's pro- it's the whiskey itself is worth the hype that it's getting. And uh, comparing that to Bell Mead, uh, Bell Mead does have more age on it, but the flavor is, is spicier than the Bell Mead Reserve and is quite good. So again, Merry Christmas, squad. It was awesome. We'll do it again next week. I'll be back. New Year's. You know what? I'm not going to guarantee what night I'm going to do it next week. Uh, I'll talk to the wife. We'll get in consensus, as we do, because we're committed to, you know, love and stuff. (laughs) Anyway, we'll do it Wednesday or Thursday night next week at 8 o'clock. If you're not following me on Instagram, go follow me at Drew P. Whiskey, because I will go live on there periodically and... uh, to surprise you guys with content and i'll take some dank pics of my my bottle show you what i'm drinking and keep you up to speed with how the hunt's going if you liked this video uh please get down and like the video before you bail i'd appreciate that um and if you like any of my videos and think any of your friends would be jamming on them just give them a share that just helps kind of spread the channel a little bit don't forget to buy a shirt if you want one again they'll ship out on january 2nd but i appreciate you all so much uh, hope you have a great christmas Remember to keep it neat.